My name is Stephen Beckett. I'm the lead programmer with Our World. We're going to have a look at the administrative side of Time and Talents, the software that supports Our World. You'll notice on the login and on your administrative login, the help files available here, an admin user guide and a communication guide. The admin user guide is indexed. You click on any entry and it'll take you to that area. Once inside, we land on a news and messaging area that allows you to post questions that all the other administrators in our world will see when they log in. If you happen to reply to one of these entries, everyone in that particular thread will receive an email copy of the whole thread. These persist for 14 days after they're created or 14 days after the last reply. If you'd like to contact a single other administrator, click the Admin to Admin tab, look up the administrator you would like to contact, find them on the drop-down list, and go ahead and post them a message. This works very much like posting messages on the member side. We'll go on to the administrative home. This is where your key functions are available. Under Manage Members, Notice you can email all your active exchange members at the click of a button. You can add an attachment to your outbound email. Choose a subject. Select who the email is from or type it in. Put in a reply to email address. Compose your message. If you want, you can paste from Word. Go ahead and send. Every active member in your membership will receive your email. Again from Manage Members. You can look up a member by their account number, by part of their name, or by part of their username. If you simply click Find Member, the list will be populated with every member in the system. We're going to go take a look at Ernest Hemingway's account. Much like the member side, you can see that you have access to profile, contact, services, groups, attributes, images. You can report hours on a member's behalf. You have control over every single entry in their statement area. And from their profile, you can also leave a series of administrative notes. This is a text type field, so you can actually write a book in here just about. When you email a member, it automatically puts your administrative name, the date, and the subject of your email at the top of this list here. Under Manage Messages, you can reply to or delete or add messages that will go out to the whole member exchange. They'll go out in the weekly email. And when members log in, they'll see your message posted on the member side. Similarly to the member side, you can do a hard drill down to explore offers that are available in the exchange and or requests. I can look at fundraising look at auction, and get a list of members that are providing that particular offer. Each individual exchange has control over their attributes, services, groups, and colors. For example, we'll take a look at services. The service list is populated with a series of categories, and inside those categories are individual services. Here's a category called advice with 18 services under that category. The numbers at the right show how many active members and inactive members have that service associated with their account. And further to the right, how many active and inactive members have associated transactions. The key thing to know here is that attributes, groups, and services can all be rearranged on the fly. So let's say we want to take this immigration service and we're going to move it into Human Resource. We'll go ahead and click Delete. It knows that it's associated with the member's accounts. We'll use the same category, Advice, select the category, and select Human Resource, the service into which we're going to move the old one. Make the reassignment. Pointers are updated and we're set to go. 
It's an example of how you can reorder the service list while it's in use. So one of the most powerful features about the administrative side of Time and Talents is reporting. The first thing we do is select the report we want. There's 25 different reports. One is the applicant pool. It's a report that lets you track the progress of new applicants becoming members. You can set when they have submitted their references, if you have a signed release, if you're collecting a signed release, you can schedule orientations in an orientation date, indicate that that's been finished. You can indicate you've collected member attributes and demographic information. You can assign the member a mentor. You can do other kinds of filing. We have some exchanges that do things like a criminal background check. And they change this to yes when that function is done. Of course, you want to save your changes when you're complete. And when you're ready, you go ahead and activate the member. They're removed from the applicant pool and their account is set to active and they're sent to final email. Another useful report if you're collecting annual donations from your members is Accounts Receivable. It lets you sort by name, date, or member ID, lets you mark a member's donation paid, collect additional hours in lieu of the donation, or forgive the donation altogether until next year. Three classic and well-used reports, email list, contact list, and transactions by provider. Contact list and transactions by provider are two reports that can be mapped. Let's run a contact list on our membership. The simplest report would be simply just to get a contact list of all of our active members. I've selected active on the screen. I'll click update to pull the report results. We have 728 active members in the demo and when we print preview, we get the actual list with links to their profiles, a link to their email, member since, last exchange, their balance, their member type, their first name and last name, and a phone number in case we want to call them. If we map the report, we would get a live Google map with a pin based on the address information in their profile. I'd like to just quickly demonstrate the power of reporting. Let's say we're having a health fair and we want to invite all of our active members that provide health care. We'll go into email list, select active members, and under the service category, we'll select health and wellness. Under provide and receive for the category health and wellness, We'll select Provide, so we only get providers and not receivers of healthcare. We'll click Update. We have 188 members that provide services in this category. If we wanted to, we could narrow it to just a specific category like alternative health, body work, and breath work. Now we have just 68 members offering specific services in the category health and wellness. We'll print Preview and email these members. We could also send this list to ourselves to upload it to MailChimp or Constant Contact. We can attach a PDF flyer or some other graphic file, enter a subject, who the email is from, a reply to email, and the body of our email, either composing it here using this WordPad-like editor, or we can actually create an email in Microsoft Word and paste it using this paste from Word icon. Back in reporting, let's look at transactions by provider. Let's pull up transactions that occurred in the category health and wellness. And for the time period, let's have a look at 2012. So we'll look from January 1st to December 31st. We'll get all the transactions in healthcare that happened. Here we have 886 transactions. If we print preview, we'll see them all. I'm going to go ahead and map the report and show the map. You can see the effect that our Exchange Portland has had on healthcare in 2012 
providing those services to the surrounding community. The map pens, again, the red ones are providers, and the blue ones are receivers. Other reports let you see transaction count between members, a couple of types of service directory by member or by service, and counts and hours of services provided by category. So you can get a hierarchical list of services provided in your exchange. There's more information about the many reports available on our website and in the help files as well. When new members fill out the join form, they get put in a kind of a holding tank. You'll find them in the View Applicants area. To find out more about the new member process, simply click Help when you're in View Applicants or go to the Applicants tab in Help and read everything here. The Communication Guide has information about all the notices and messages that are sent out by the system automatically and what triggers them and where you can go to edit them. Typically, messages are edited in the System Notices area. You select the area of interest, for instance, the Join form, and the various messages and text that you have control over are here to edit. Be sure to click Save after making changes. Search is a very powerful tool. I'll type in the word hour. We immediately get links to providers, receivers, member bios, members by name, member to exchange messages, and knowledge base records, which get populated when you contact support and we anonymize and answer your questions. If we go to providers, and this works just like this on the member side, we can limit the distance that the providers are from us. For instance, we could call up members within two miles. To manage your organization info, and also the content on your login page, go to the organization info area. The name of your exchange, your address, your phone number, your motto, your logo if you have one, can all be entered here. If you have a default expiration you'd like for service ads, some select a year, some select never, some select a month. You can set that here. If you're collecting annual donation of dues and or hours, you set that here. If you want to collect references on your join form, you toggle collect references to on. And if you want to give your members an hour or two for joining, you enter that amount here. The bottom three editors are used for entering the content you'd like to have show up on your member and administrative login pages. You can go to source and paste in source code like a Google Calendar or hyperlinks. Or you can create content simply by pasting it in from Word or creating it right here in the editor. To add new administrators to Exchange, click Manage Staff. At the bottom of the page, enter the name of the new staff person, their email username, and their login password. That's a very quick look at the administrative side. To learn more about these functions, we routinely conduct Skype trainings that you can attend online and learn about the software just to see if you might be interested in using it to manage your local exchange. Have a great day.